that reminded me of my friendship with one Hindu ashram, the founder of which, the founder of which was extremely amazing, great being. I was so impressed. And um, then I felt that the world is not dark. There are many good people. There are many lights in the world. So here, in Manashakti, the founder of Manashakti, uh, Swami Vidnanandaji, just hearing about his personalities, very open-minded, highly knowledgeable, back in 1960s. Then demonstrating such humility and to the extent of encouraging the students, the disciples, not to keep even a picture of him and not to even pay respect to him when the students or the disciples meet him. So this all this morning I was just having discussion with some of the old the former disciples. And also the last time when I first met Mr. Kalgarji and Mr. Mayurji and the, the faculties here. Uh, I was so impressed to hear all these things. So what we are discussing here today, the, the three-day program at the Inter International Conference. So I think this is the right place where um, the such conferences are to be held. Finally, we see that the world is going to chaos. The world is deeply, deeply into chaos. And we need, we need our people to reconstruct the world, people to heal the world. And Manashakti is one of the, the most beautiful places where this can possibly happen. Okay, with this um, in mind, um, okay, just a very quick, say the beginning to how before we go into the prenatal, prenatal uh, the development discussion, so let's say how the universe first started. The universe started from the left side, from the left indicating uh, the, the white spot there. So that is the Big Bang. And from there in time, as you go from the left to the right, it is the evolution of the universe starting from the Big Bang to the today. Today, the, where the galaxies, the solar system and everything is created. Okay, so um, then 0.3 million years ago, 0.3 million years ago, then the Homo sapiens, the human beings started coming to being, which Charles Darwin, Charles Darwin came up with the, all this brilliant research. So from this, we, see, we know about the human evolution. Then we go to here, this painting. I'm sure this painting may not be too familiar to you, uh, but this is a um, very interesting thing. This painting was first actually instructed by the Buddha Shakyamuni himself. And I don't want to go into the details of how this painting came into being. So if you look at this painting, there are many serious points discussed here. There are 12 points there. And the, okay, those at the back, can you, see, can you, see, can you read what is written here, this, the 12 points? Those at the back. Okay, good. Many serious discussions can be happening here with these 12 points. Um, some can, can even be a little controversial because, say, what the signs, what the different nations, they decide on what would be the, the time span where the abortion is permissible. All these are very serious discussions why 20 weeks, why before 20 weeks in India and so forth. These are very serious discussions and they all will be discussed here and it can become a little controversial. 
Okay, so that finally the individuals you have to decide, right? For my job is to explain what is the year, what is happening, the prenatal, the development. So what is the development like? And then, so where the life actually started? All these things are being discussed. Okay, so the 12 links, the 12 links. So you see that, so the, the picture, the picture, uh, to give you a very, very quick overview of what this picture is all about. Um, the fact that we go through, say, the, we go through challenges of life, sickness, aging, death, and all this chaos, the, now the man-made chaos, disasters, and the natural disasters, they all are coming to being by three factors. In a most circle, you see uh, there are three creatures. They depict the three different thought processes within us, th three different thought processes. So predominantly, which creates, what creates problem amongst the people and between the, the people and the environment. And what creates a problem is depicted by what is inside the innermost circle. So it is the, the three creatures there symbolizing the three different afflictive thoughts, attachment, aversion, and ignorance. Attachment, say the, with greed, grasp everything towards yourself and not think of giving to others. And the aversion pushes others from you. So naturally, there's going to be problems. And then the ignorance, which blinds you from seeing the, having the vision of the reality. So these three thoughts within us invariably uh, the, attracts all the undesirable experiences. So now, with these three things, what we do is, for example, if I'm a little angry inside, <clears throat> my thought, angry inside, you cannot see, you cannot read my mind, but you can read my body language. From the body language, you can read that, oh, I was expecting him to be very calm and peaceful, but look, he's very angry, right? So you can see from the body language. So from the body language, the body language is expression. What is, in, what is going inside is expressed in the physical and the verbal, physical verbal. So these expressions are indicated by the second circle, the white and the black. When something good is happening inside, then the white, the glow on your face happens. Say the body, body language, the physical and verbal expressions are very gentle and tender. Whereas if what is going inside is very bad, then the expressions are very dark. That is depicted by the, the, the dark part. Uh, indicating the physical and verbal destructive actions. So as a result of these two actions, good or bad, then the resultant state, your happiness, your miseries, they're all decided by these three things. So therefore, we third, the third circle tells us as to what's the outcome. Outcome, happiness that we experience, the miseries that we go through, they are, nothing, they are all but the outcomes of the, the first two courses. Then the fourth one, fourth one, you will see that is divided into 12 segments. 12 segments, I don't want to go into too detail for this. I need at least two days <laughs> to go into detail of this. I need two days, but um, they, I will try my best to explain it in a simple, the simple words. Say these 12, these 12, are the detailed explanation how the innermost is, is connected to the second and how the second one is connected to the third. In other words, how everything that we experience, happiness, miseries, and how the, the child in the womb finally manifests when the child comes out. And this very young child in the, the, the fetus, in the, in the mother's womb, how you tackle with that, that decides how the same child is going to be like when he or she is going to be 100 years old. So how that affects the whole, the life cycle of the child. So this is being in the same, the cause-effect relationship. Cause-effect relationship is so well being explained in great detail by the 
the 12th, the outermost circle, the 12th, the 12 segments known as the 12 links of dependent origination. Now to go through this 12 links, the first one is ignorance. How we all, uh, say for example, how the rat, how the rat is trapped in the, 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 the cage. Is the rat thinks, the rat thinks that there's something eatable there. Yes, there's eatable there, but that eatable is not for him, for him, for him to enjoy is to trap him. Had it been the case that the rat, rat knows that this is to trap him or her, she, he or she would not go there. So it is the ignorance which makes the, the rat think that there's something edible for me to enjoy. There's this ignorance. This is not the intention of the person who kept the, the trap. So initiated by the ignorance. Number one is ignorance. This is how we are trapped in samsara. Ignorance. So rat is not the external rat, it is all of us. So then with this ignorance, then what happens with this ignorance? Then the, for the rat, with the ignorance, then afflictions arise. The craving to the food arose, and then the rat gets in. That craving makes him to get in. The craving is number two. Okay, so the number one, number two, this is bridged by the craving. With the number two, the attachment, affliction, that made the rat to move. Movement is the karma. Physical and verbal, mental movement, that is the karma. So sometimes we have a very naive impression of what karma is. Very naive impression, right? Okay, it seems like here there are more girls. <laughs> more mothers? Okay, so I can talk about the males then. <laughs> so the boys, not all boys, maybe in some case girls also, right? So what they do is that, particularly those who, have a, who live in a system which believes in law of karma. So what they do is that uh, they, what they do is that first, before the exam, when they were in schools, colleges, they don't study. They always they find themselves in pubs. And then the mother says, no, you should be studying well. You should be studying well. Oh, no, don't worry, don't worry, mom. I'll take care of it, don't worry. Right, always in the pubs, uh, always in the, the nightclubs. And then finally the exam comes and then fails. And the mother says, now look, this is your outcome. And the boy or the girl will say, that, mom, what to do is my karma. <laughs> right, this is how people abuse the concept of the karma. This is how the people abuse the concept of karma. Now, they, I don't have time to explain you in detail how this karma cannot be abused. How karma can be abused? I don't have time to explain this, but this is something with, that we need to be in mind, number two, karma. So this karma that the individual person actually engaged in, so that karma leads an imprint. For example, say, if I hit this container, metallic container, with a hammer, hammer. So that's the act, act of hitting. So this act of hitting leaves an imprint, leaves an imprint. Imprint is not like an external seat, but the same container gets dented. It is a dent is formed there. So that dent is formed on the container. So where is this karma? Where is the dent of the, the karma? Where is the imprint of the karma laid? Is laid on the consciousness number three. Consciousness, the mind. So consciousness, say the is the English word, and the Asian cultures, Asian philosophies, they they borrow this word consciousness uh, to understand different meanings. Some understand it's a mind. Some understand it is the soul. Some understand it's atma. It doesn't matter. So there is the there is something there which is non-tangible, which is not material, yet it has a tremendous power. It has a, it, this is the pivotal of the entire existence of the world. For example, for each one of us, our mind is the most important thing. Our mind is the most important thing. Uh, again, so, the, so to make it real quick, the consciousness. It is left there as the imprint on consciousness. Then we will jump to number eight. Number eight, number eight is the craving. So what happens, this imprint 
imprint of all what you did is laid on the, the consciousness. And then towards the time of the death, towards the time of death, what happens is that this seed is being germinated. Germinated like the water, the seed, the apple seed, you plant it somewhere. If you put water in it, then the seed will start to germinate. If I put the seed on the table, it will never germinate. So it requires water to germinate. So that number eight craving is this, the water. Is the water to germinate this seed towards the, the, towards the end of one's life. So that seed to decide your next life, that is going to be activated by the craving. Craving for you not to die. I don't want to die. That is a craving. Craving to live longer. And then number nine, when this craving becomes very intense, then it becomes grasping. Then this craving and grasping, these two will manifest the number two, karma, into number ten. Number two is the dry seed. This dry seed will become a very germinated seed. And I don't know if the, the, the front rows, you can see the, the pictures there. Number 10 is, say the number 10 is a pregnant woman, depicted with the pregnant woman. And then number 11 is birth. Number 11 is birth. Okay, now the, the point is 11 birth. So there, the conception happens in the mother's womb. The conception happens. Number 11, the birth. So then the, what we speak about, the prenatal stage starts from there. So that is, you, are, you already move to the next life. Next life, in the, the birth conception happens at number 11. Number 11, from there, a new birth has already started, new life has already started. So then from number 11, then we, what we do is we go to number four. Then the detailed account of the, the development of the, the fetus in the, inside the mother's womb. Number four, number five, Number four is the name and form, and number five is sensorsis. I will explain each one of them. Number six is contact, number seven is feeling. Okay, so this feeling, it already started in the mother's womb. So now to go a little into detail, <clears throat> say the first for the prenatal the development, the first thing that happens is the conception of a child in the mother's womb. Conception according to the, the very standard text. When does it happen, conception? So therefore, this is something which we really need to take care of, uh, particularly, I would say, Mana Shakti, um, the sadhaks, and the, because you have a set of your own belief. And people, in other words, people who believe, people who believe in what is known as the, uh, say, a mind, a mind, atma, soul, whatever you may call it. Some people may call it soul, some people may call it mind, some people may call it atma. So when does, when is that trapped? In the mother's womb, that is not, that is not. After 20 weeks, that is the first moment. First moment, right? So therefore, the question is the abortion. And I was so curious because that I think a few years ago, a few years ago. Perhaps, like, I think, not really a few years ago, maybe about like 10 years ago, there was one, the Australian girl, and uh, the, she came to me and asked, what do you do? Should I go for abortion? I said, no, there's a life there. Life is precious. This life is so precious. And then she said that, but I'm not ready. The, the child is going to suffer. And I said, don't worry, the child has his or her own karma, right? One. Number two, that once you have this child, you will see that this child is like a jewel for you, gem for you, right? And then after about three years later, 
when I was in Australia, um, she came to see me with a child. And she said, you are right. Now the, the center of my, this child, this daughter, is the center of my life. She said it. And the love between the mother and the daughter is so beautiful. So what I'm saying that this is about the life. It's not about, say, the anything else. And then I read as to why the, the, what, the duration, the, the duration where the abortion is the permissible in India, and 20 weeks before that, okay. So I, I checked why 20 weeks? What's the clue? Scientifically, what's the clue? Why? Why 20 weeks? Why not 19? Why not 10? Why not 5? Right? Or why not after the 20, 20, why not after the, the 25, 30? I checked it. Then the answer given was that the same, that is the average, that is the average maturation where if the child comes out, the child can survive. If the child comes out before 20 weeks, the child cannot survive on his or her, his or her own the, the power. So because of this, then the, the termination, the, the duration legally allowed is before 20 weeks. This is what he what said. And I said, no. For example, if, you, if, if I'm in the hospital, if I'm, if I'm going through a, the, some, like a coma, right? Logically speaking, if I come out, if somebody says, okay, now you have to survive on your own, I'm still in coma. I cannot survive on my own. I have to depend on somebody else. Does it mean that the euthanasia is permissible? It's not permissible at all. There's a life there. Not because that whether he or she can survive. The point is there's whether or not there's a life. This life is important. So from the point of view of the life, whereas the determination, the, the allowed duration, the, the timing, which was set as 20 weeks in India. In other countries, I don't know. It may vary. But in India, it's like 20 weeks. So that is on the basis of whether, whether or not the child can survive on his or her own the physical strength. Um, and then on the other hand, it is the life, too. If you are to, if you say, Manashakti, of course, the Swamiji's blessings and Swamiji's the inspirations. So then, the life is more important. Life is more important. Because of that, the conception, we should consider from the term of conception. Okay, so I don't want to go into too detail. So the conception, for that, what are the things required? It says the union of the parents, and then the, the consciousness or the mind roaming around that place. The spirit, in the form of spirit, we may call it a spirit roaming around that place. And the karmic connection. Karmic connection between this, the, the, the spirit or the... A spirit, I don't mean the spirit in the, what, uh, the mystic, mystic. Uh, mystic sense, right? Mm -hmm. Spirit meaning a consciousness or a mind, a mind hovering around and karmic connection, very strong karmic connection between that mind and the, the two parents must be there. So when these things happen, then the conception happens. The moment the conception happens, love is there. Okay, this is what we have to keep in mind. Very serious, and uh, you may put into put me into debate and into trouble. Okay, so I've already said what I have to say. I don't want to go into detail more. Oh. Okay, next. Now the prenatal stage and prenatal care. So the what is the, the stages there? The, once the child is conceived in the mother's womb, what are the stages there? And then, of course, the care should be given. For that matter, the point is how, how what is the state, what is the, the state of the, the child, the fetus in the mother's womb? And that phase, nine months duration, and that greatly decides what the child is going to be like till the child or the person dies, greatly decides. So therefore, it is so important um, the, when 
Mr. Kelkerji, and uh, Mr. Kelkerji, when he came to Delhi uh, a year ago, right? Yeah. yeah, I was so fascinated. In fact, it's the first time <laughs> in my life, although I attended so many conferences and so forth, it's the first time that somebody came with the invitation for a conference a year in advance. <laughs> that is Mana Shakti. I was so impressed. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so the point is that the now that the they say, what the child is going to be like. So everybody, every mother, every the, all parents, all parents they want the the children to be very successful, very kind, gentle, knowledgeable, smart, beautiful, right? But then does it guarantee that the the who decides? Okay, we will have a child with the, the blonde hair. We'll have a child with, okay, a tall, blonde hair, slim. No, we cannot decide, right? So, to a great extent, it's very accidental. To a great extent, it's very accidental, right? But there are so many things that parents can do, right? Of course, one is the substantial cause, meaning the child, the child, same, the, those who believe in the former, the former birth or the, the, the former life, and then we talk about the karma of the child. Karma of the child, meaning what the child, the, what kind of the, what we call it, the, um, the genes, what kind of the, the genes. The genes can be spoken of in two ways. One is metaphorical and one is literal. One is the metaphorical. Metaphorical gene is, say, the karma, which, like, which I have, sh okay, I don't want to go back. Okay, let's say the, the karma of your former life, that, like, 80% of who you are going to be like in the next life is going to be decided by that karma. That karma will decide the gene formation of this life. So, the cause they say the genes, the genes, if you inherit the genes of the defective genes, you can't do as much, right? Even if the, the, the mother is a doctor, the father is a doctor, and all the father is the, the richest person, the mother is the richest person, still the, the, the child can be a defective child in terms of the deformation, the birth. So, that is greatly determined by the karma of the child, number one. Okay, say in the end there is possibility, if there is possible of question answers, I would be happy to explain, uh, go into the question answers. Then the second part is cooperative cause, which is care of and care for the mother at the time of the, <coughs> the, uh, the prenatal stage. So there, the, the mother should take care of the physical, and the mental, and people around should take care of the mother. Okay, so that there are so many experts speaking on these topics. Okay, I'll, I'll go into a little there. Okay, let's say the prenatal stage and the prenatal care. So it can be broken down into three stages. Okay, so, so this is my greatest problem. The materials, when I transfer from my computer to another computer, everything shifts. <laughs> okay, I'm very sorry. Okay. So the, the germinal stage. Germinal stage, there, from the 12 links, which I discussed, discussed earlier, said the first and the second. The first and second, meaning from the 12, it is the first and the fourth, number four. Not number four. 11 and number four. 11 is birth, and number four is name and form. Birth means just a conception in the mother's womb. Just conception, right? Number 11, don't worry what is number 11. It is the birth. The conception in mother's womb. So germinal stage there, conception in mother mother's womb happened from the 12 links. And the number four, which I wrote here as number two, is the name and form, meaning that form meaning the body of the child. So there, it is still very, very, very gross. It's not at all the physical form of a human being. It's just a substance there, physical substance there. That is the, the form and the name referring to the mind, mind of the 
mind of the child in the mother's womb, the conception, the time of the conception. So that is known as name because physical form is something which our senses can see. For example, the, the doctors, the gynecologists, they can check what's the state of your, the state of the, the fetus there, state of the, uh, state of the child there, the, 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 the first mode of conception. They can check it. That is the, the, physical, the physical aspect, which is the form. And then the mind of the child, the mind, this we cannot physically see that. So that could be, that should be seen through the, seen or understood through your, say, the concepts. Through your concepts. So the concepts are translated into the labels, the names. So therefore the mind is referred to as the name. So name refer, it refers to the mind. So name and form. So these two are the, the stages, the birth, conception, and then the coming together, coming together, the name and form. In the 12 links, it is de depicted by a boatman with a passenger. The passenger, the two passengers, once they're in the boat, when they are uh, the crossing the river, the two passengers, whether they like it or not, they have to be together till they cross the, the river. <laughs> Likewise, the body and the mind, once you are trapped in this body, the body and mind, whether you like this body or not, you have to go together till your death. <laughs> so I'm not going to go into detail of the, the 12 pictures there. Actually, these are depicted by the pictures, beautiful pictures. Um, now the next thing is, okay, embryonic stage. Stage number two, embryonic stage. So there what happens is the sense sources. Sense sources meaning to grow. They start to grow. And then that is number five. Number five in the 12 links. Don't worry about numbers. And finally, the, the, the fetal stage. Fetal stage, very important things are happening. Number, say, the contact, which is number six. And feeling, which is number seven. So there we should be taken care of. Particularly we should take care of in these two stages. Okay, let's say, some people they say that the, always we should be very objective. We should be very objective and uh, we should be very realistic. Oftentimes, we see that, okay, so what the, the mother does at the time of the, the child in the mother's womb, that decides, completely decides what the child is going to be like. Uh, that is also not too true. It greatly contributes, but after the birth, nurturing of the child, that plays a very important role. Nurturing of the child after the birth. Before the birth, that plays a very important role. It is not 100%. And after the birth, it's not 100%. After birth plays a very important role, inside the mother's womb also plays a very important role. Both should be taken care of. We should be very realistic. Some say that whatever is done inside, finish. Right? After that, the nurturing doesn't... <coughs> no, this is again one extreme. So, but we should take care of both. Take care of the child in both the stages. Okay, so here, the, the fetal stage, so then contact. Contact meaning, now the senses. The senses, senses, they become prominent. Prominent to the extent that the senses, the job of the senses, eye sense is to meet with the visual objects. Ear sense is to meet with the sound. Likewise, the nose with the smell, the body with the touch, and then the, the tongue with the, 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 the taste, the gustatory. So there, the senses, they become quite operational at that point. What operational? Accompanying senses is the mind becoming active, grossly active. Okay, then the next stage is the feeling. Not only that, you have the contact, the, 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 the child inside the mother's womb. Not only that, you have the contact. The contact meaning, for example, say when you sit for too long cross-legged, your feet, your legs become numb. When your legs become numb, you touch the floor, you could feel the, some kind of sensation there, but you don't feel whether it's smooth, rough. You cannot really discern the, the quality of that touch. But you just sense that I'm, my feet now touch the ground. 
but you don't feel what is the hot, rough, smooth, and so forth. Now, the next the feeling. That is the stage where the child inside the mother's womb, they can vividly feel, vividly feel the hot, cold, smooth, rough, all these things are being felt there. So at this point, at this point what is happening, the child's, the cognitive Okay, how many more minutes now? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Oh, Thank you. Okay, so the, the feeling. So there, the feeling, it is happening. With the feeling, two things are to be inferred. One is the very active cognitive processes are happening. And then on the basis of the cognitive the, the processes, affective processes also happening. Two things, with the feelings. When the feeling is explained, then these two things are happening. So cognitively, how refined is your cognitive process depends on the information, how refined the information. If you get a very good information, if you're a scientist, for example, here Manashakti is keen on the many researchers. For to do the research, you need to have a very precise, accurate data. Right? If the data is all wrong, the conclusion that you're going to draw, draw forth, is going to be a disastrous conclusion, right? So therefore, the finally, the, the cognitive processes, how to find your cognitive processes are, is determined by the, how to find your information that you get. So if, who gives the information? The mother gives the information. While the child is still in the mother's womb, the mother gives the information. And people around also contribute to the, contribute to the happiness and unhappiness of the mother, Right? That directly affects the child inside. So that is the cognitive process. And then on the basis of the cognitive process, then the affective. Affective meaning the child be inside becomes aggressive, in stress, tension, or happy, calm. That is all decided by the cognitive process. When the cognitive process senses that there's a threat there, threat there, then the tension builds up in the child inside the mother's womb. So therefore, at this stage, particularly during the, the fetal stage, the mothers should be ext taking extreme care of, to make sure that the mother herself is mentally very calm, peaceful, and the, even the people around, right? Mother can complain about, oh, I have this problem, I have this headache, this, that, and so forth. And, then, so, and the, the, the husband should not say that, why? You are just complaining a very small thing, bear it. No. You should be very sensitive. The husband should be very sensitive. People around should be very sensitive to make sure that these complaints are very serious complaints. They affect the child inside. It's not the mother, not only the mother. So there, the fetal stage is so important for one to uh, take care of. Okay. So now the cognitive and the affective development. Okay, so I'm very sorry. All these terrible things, right? Okay, so now the, for the cognitive development. Cognitive development, so there, what, the child, what is happening inside the child's, the, inside the, the mother's womb for the child. So the cognitive, cognitive has these four characteristics. One is the vastness of the cognitive process. Number two is the clarity of the cognitive process. Number three is the, the profundity, how deep profundity, and finally the swiftness of the cognitive process. So these four things are there to be uh, noted of in terms of the nature of the cognitive development. And then what should be the content matter of the con cognitive development since the child, in, a child is in the mother's womb, prenatal stage, from there and then coming out. So there the parents should be focusing on the, in terms of content matter, to teach the child to introduce child to the concept of dependent origination, that things are all dependently coming to being, that nothing is independently there. When you see things as dependently originated, then the, say, the stress level goes down instantly. That is so important. For example, let's say, let's say that, say, okay, let me give just one example, a say on that, Okay, the three containers, 
The first container having water with zero degrees centigrade or let's say five degrees centigrade. Zero degrees centigrade, it may freeze into ice. Okay, five degrees centigrade. And the second water with 20 degrees centigrade, say 15 degrees centigrade. And the third, 40 degrees centigrade. You put your left hand in the five degrees centigrade, it's so cold. Right hand in your 40 degrees centigrade, it's so hot. Stay there for five minutes. And then take out both hands and put in the 20 degrees centigrade water. The left hand will say it's so hot, and the right hand will say it's so cold. It's the same water, it's the same person, but you get two different information. So that is all because of the relativity. Relativity and dependent, de the dependency on the frame of reference. Whereas we see them as so intrinsically real, so solidly there. So that is known as the concept of dependent origination, concept of relativity. If you introduce the child, since the child is inside the, the, the womb, and then coming out to these two concepts, then you will see that, okay, even the hotness, the coldness, this is all just relative. The same thing can display these two qualities. So it's not that it's intrinsically hot there, it's not that it's intrinsically cold there, so this is how my thinking. The moment you say it's my thinking, you will not blame the outside. When you don't blame the outside, your mind is stress-free. So this is so important concept. Okay, now I don't want to go into too detail about this part. Okay, this is the dependent, say if you look at the wheel here, the wheel, there are like seven wheels there, seven, eight wheels there. All these wheels are connected to each other. And tell me which of the wheel is most important? If you stop one wheel, which, which, which of the wheel, if you stop it, will stop all the others? All, right? It's not that there's one wheel which is more important. Every wheel is important. Likewise, everything is important. It is things that come into being by dependence on every aspect. It's not only just one. The, for stress and anger, we need a, a target, a very specific target. When you realize that there's no specific target, everything is related, even myself is included, right? You will not blame yourself, generally speaking. Right? You, blame, you will not blame yourself. Right? You'll always, we are always expert in blaming our sight. Right? Okay. So, say, uh, let me, I don't want, now we have not much time. So, uh, let me give you one exercise. Very quickly, let's do this exercise and see how the, we have to, say, in terms of child inside the mother's womb or outside, how to teach them. First of all, to distress oneself, to get out of the, the stress, tension, and depression eventually. Okay, let us do a quick exercise. How many of you are ready? Raise hands. Thank you. Okay, uh, if you're ready, give me the answer only after, only after you, only after you, if only after I tell you, give me an answer. Till that point, you don't say the answer verbally. Mentally, you do the calculation. It's a simple calculation. Okay, two plus two. No, don't say this. <laughs> Just do the calculation mentally and tell me the answer only when I ask you what's the answer. Okay, let's do this again. Two plus one, plus two, plus one, minus two, plus one, minus three, plus two, plus two. What's the answer? Yes. Amazing. Wow. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Ready? Okay. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 minus 3 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1. Hey, listen, listen, listen. No, no, no. Please listen. Listen, listen. Listen. Let's do it again. Okay, 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 minus 1 plus 3 plus 3 minus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 minus 3 plus 1 plus 3. What's the answer? No. <laughs> How come that you were able to give the correct answer during the first exercise and why can't you give the correct answer to the second? Tell me why. Huh? No, raise your hands, somebody raise your hands. We are not practiced uh, to uh, calculate so fast up till uh, if we start practicing, we might be able to answer. Okay, very good. Anyone else? Why? Why you, no, why you fail to give the answer in the second case? Okay. Anyone else? 
Huh? We have not used right brain. We are not used to alignment. I right brain, okay, okay. Okay, maybe the last one? Anxiety, but in the first case, you also you gave the correct answer. But the second, you didn't give the correct answer. Why not? No, why did you give the, the... So then... Okay, maybe the, the, maybe the last here. Oh, okay, okay, I'm fast, right? Second, the second one, I'm fast. I said it too fast. Okay, thank you. This answer represents the answer of 99% of the people in the world. Because they, they never said that because my mind works so slow. They said that you said it fast. You, you said it fast. We blame our side, right? This is what we do. This is what we do. The moment we blame our side, the moment we blame our side, then let's see. Okay, done, done, done. No problem. <laughs> Okay. 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 The moment we blame our side, why do we blame our side? Right? Say, if this, if he says slowly, then I can give the correct answer. Right? So, which means that you have to make me say, say slow. Right? Which is actually more helpful? If you blame me and you force me to say slowly, then the next person will come, I begin will say very fast. Right? So when will that stop? Everybody so that everybody will say very slow. No, you can it's not in your hand. But if you learn how to how to do it very fast, right? No matter any whosoever comes, you have no problem. So if you learn how to rectify the inside, right? All problems are solved. If you blame outside, you will never solve the problem, right? So therefore, so therefore, only if we know that things out there, they're all relative. Newton sp spoke about the relativity of space. Einstein added the relativity of time. Then the, the classical Indian traditions, they added this, the mind, relative to mind, how a mind thinks. Our mind thinks. It is not only purely the external. If you learn, externally, they're all relative. There's nothing there to target to say that this is the, the reason. It's how our mind sees on the basis of relativity, how our mind interprets. So if you know that, then you will rectify the insight. And then all problems are solved. So I'll conclude by giving up the, say, the one stanza set by a great, great Indian master by the name Bodhisattva Shantideva. So what he said is that if you go out barefooted and if, you, you, if you're bothered by the, the pebbles and the thorn pricking your two feet and you may say, please cover the land with leather so that I can walk peacefully. So he said that you will not, it is totally impractical to get enough leather to cover the entire earth. Instead, cover the two tiny feet. Two tiny feet and warm. That suffices covering the entire earth with the wet leather. Thank you so much. One minute, sir. One minute. Thank you very much. Excellent presentation. I'm really honored that we are here with such an enlightened master, a beautiful exercise. So now, henceforth, no more blaming outside, but getting prepared inside. Am I right? Yes. May I request Sri Hari Kanpe, our lifetime devotee of Manshakti, to present a memento to. And as he has rightly said, I think it's more scientific religion. Uh, yes. Atto dipo bhava. Be your own light.
טוב, לא זורת. אה, וואו, מה זה היה זה? See, there is, you know, this is also part of yoga. So all your acute points get stimulated and you will get enough energy to stay charged for the entire day. <laughs>